Do you like to shoot classic firearms? Or maybe you're a hobby gunsmith. Let me show you one product that you shouldn't be without. One of the hardest areas to inspect of a firearm is the barrel. I've been to gun shows where I've held rifles up into the light to see if the rifling's still good or maybe there's some rusting or pitting in the barrel, but in the end, I was still just kind of guessing. It would have been nice if they'd had these. Now this is an Indus snake. It costs about $55 and it can work with your phone or your tablet or in some cases I'm using my laptop. You can get right down in that barrel, see what the barrel condition is and then make a decision from there. Now Endo Snake did send this in for review and I do want to thank them for that, but you are going to see this in some of the classic firearms I'm going to show you in this video today. Now you can see with this connector here, this is set up currently for USB one or two. And if you flip this up, this is a micro USB. So this will fit into your cell phones. And if you have a USB-C, like your newer Android devices, you click that on, and now this will go right into your cell phone. On this cable, you have this dial, and I'll show you in a little bit. This adjusts the amount of light coming out of the end of snake, and depending on the app that you're running, if you click this button, it'll take a picture. Now I have this endo snake plugged into my laptop, and I'm gonna show you, as I move this dial, you can see that light getting brighter, and then back down and it'll get dimmer again. So this will really help you fine tune the amount of light coming out of the endo snake and into the barrel. Now the endo snake does have several attachments, including a mirror. The one problem I found with a mirror is it only works for 40 caliber or larger. I tried putting it down the barrel of a 30-06 and also a 308 and it would not fit. So the mirror for inspecting barrels is not the greatest. There's also a hook and a magnet, so that way if you have to retrieve something down a small area, you can try to retrieve some metallic objects. Now to put the mirror attachment on, you'll see on the endo snake here, there is this little area right here. It's a little bit smaller than the rest of the endo snake. It doesn't really show up in the camera, but what happens is, is you slide your mirror or your other attachments in there, and then you push in here and this clicks into that area and you can see it's being caught. And then there's your mirror. So that way the ender snake is pointed here and this is getting your, uh, whatever you're looking at from the side. The one thing I found is these clips are a little bit of a pain to deal with. And if you're going down a tight barrel, um, these are going to come off. So, um, I'm not all that impressed with the mirror, but it does work, like I said, for 40 caliber and larger, which pretty much takes out most of the guns that you're ever going to inspect a barrel. So don't expect the Ender Snake to do a 90 degree look at the rifling of your barrel. You're going to be looking head on down that barrel and making your decisions from there. If you have an iPhone or an iPad that you're going to be using the Ender Snake, you're going to need to buy something additional. It's going to be a Wi-Fi box. Now these things are about 25 bucks off the website and they have a battery pack so you charge it up so it drives the endo snake and then from here you connect your iPhone or your iPad to the Wi-Fi network that's being emitted from this box and then connect your app in so that way you can see. Apple gets really weird about the connectors into their devices. They're very proprietary so it's much easier to just engineer a Wi-Fi solution to connect your endo snake into a device. So that's what they did for your iOS devices. Now, enough going through the features. Let's see this thing in action. Now I have this rifle in my vise here and I'm gonna feed the endo snake into this barrel. These muzzle devices get a little tough to get into the barrel. But once you're in, you can see I'm looking right down that barrel. And one of the hardest things to do with this is actually learn to go slow enough that you can see everything. And as you can see here, I'm twisting back and forth. And you can see there's a lot of lint in this barrel. And 
let's see here if we can find it. And this is an AR-10, so this is a 308. And as I'm going down, it's, oh, let's see, that's oh, lint. It takes a little while to get used to working with this as it's turning, because you just really never know which way is up. But you can see in this barrel, it's pretty clean. I mean, it could use a little more cleaning there. Um, you can see on the walls, um, you know, in the lands there, that there's still a little bit of um, maybe some copper fouling in there from, um, from shooting this rifle. Oh, it's right there. Right here is the gas port in the barrel. So um, as your bullet's coming down, it's going to bleed off a little bit of gas going up and then to move the action for the, uh, for the AR here. But overall, this barrel is looking pretty good. Um, again, there's just a little bit of metal fouling in there we got to clean up with. So let's change to um, something a little more classic like a, um, an M1 Garand. So I have my M1 Garand mounted up in my Ultra Vice here. And right off the bat here, you can see, look at that rusting in the barrel. Um, I've worked on this rifle a little bit to try to get that rusting down. But this rifle is, um, is pretty heavily rusted. And right there, um, so we get right here on my screen is the gas port for this rifle. But as we start going down, I mean, you can see that rust. And right there, look at all of that rust. Um, so this barrel is pretty, is in some pretty bad shape. It's not the worst, but um, this rifle is probably looking at a rebarrel job coming up sometime in its uh, future. Um, I don't shoot this rifle all that often, but it does um, it does get out you know a few times, uh, probably about every five years. But yeah, look at that rust. It's pretty much down the right the rifling there. Um, it's like frosting in the barrel there. I mean, there still is a little bit of rifling there, but it's not quite as sharp. And then as we get closer to the bolt there, you can see that barrel gets pretty good there towards the bolt. And there's the chamber, and there's the actual bolt itself. So this rifle is going to need a rebarrel job sometime in its future. Um, it's The rust does not look that bad. But, um, you know, probably a couple of firings would take that rust out of the barrel. Um, I could fire lap this barrel, maybe get the, the barrel to kind of clean up a little bit. But um, there's still not a lot of rifling left in this barrel anyway. So it's going to need, uh, it's going to need some work right now. It's just trying to preserve the rifle and keep that rust from getting any worse. But, um, but yeah, you can see here, this rifle, when you're working with some of these classic firearms, you're going to want to make sure that these barrels are, are, are safe to shoot. And this is a great tool for it. So let's put, um, let's put something a little different onto the vise for you. I'm going to show you a rifle that hasn't been shot in a really long time. This is a Remington Viper. They haven't made this for a long time. Um, and it's a 22, so this kind of shows you how small this bore scope is. But look at all of the leading in this barrel. Um, it's pretty bad, and it looks like we got a little bit of rust here in that barrel. But that leading is is really horrible. Um, so this needs to this this gun needs some attention um, to get it to firing condition, or at least safe firing condition, and definitely address, 
that rusting in the barrel. Um, I know this gun sat in the back of a safe for a while and hasn't been shot in a really long time. I can actually see some surface rust on the barrel here. So this gun really needs some attention. But yeah, looking all the way down the barrel, you can see that leading um, all the way down. And then you're starting to see some clearing in the barrel right here um, before the leading. And there's the bolt. So there's probably not any pitting in this barrel. It's just all covered up with that lead. So we'll, uh, we'll have to get this thing cleaned up and give it some love. And, um, you know, maybe take it out to the range every once in a while. Because this thing, I know this gun just does not get shot. So... Anyways, that's enough of the rifles. Let's show you a couple of pistols and then, uh, and then kind of tell you what my thoughts of this product are. So on my Ultra Vice is a firearm from my childhood here. This is a, um, a Dan Wesson 357 revolver here. And looking down this barrel, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It, it could use a little bit of work. Um, it's been, uh, been about a year or two since I fired this, um, but there is some letting. I mean, look at right here. You can see some letting. I could probably even scrape that off. It's there. It's it's you know pretty deep right there, and it's only right at the beginning of the barrel. Um, the rest of it is not really isn't that bad. I mean, it, it could use a cleaning. Um, Looks like there's some scratches down the barrel, but I don't know if those scratches are um, maybe the brush going down and there's some leading on that barrel, um, which is a possibility. But um, but yeah, this is a uh, this is not too bad, but it's it is kind of uh, it is kind of important to make sure that you are cleaning these, and that's what's nice about uh, having. A tool like this is that after you clean it or you know every once in a while or maybe every year maybe bore scope all your guns to see if you're actually cleaning them correctly here and as you can see I'm actually working with the brightness of the camera and that's too dark but yeah right there is a really good picture of that leading in the barrel so I have one more gun that I want to show you. Um, it's a real classic and this gun is over a hundred years old. So let's take a look at that. So on the Ultra Vice here, we have a Breda 1915. So this gun, we're not quite sure in the serial number. We think it's 1916. So this gun's about 105 years old. Uh, this gun's out of my wife's collection. And you can see right off the bat here, there's a little bit of rust on the grooves. And as we go down, the barrel's looking look good. Looks like we got a little bit of rust there on the um, the breech face, but not bad. Um, this is not bad. Now we have had this gun out. We don't shoot this gun often. We've only shot it um, a few times when my wife first got it, just to make sure it was actually firing. Uh, this shoots a nine millimeter Glacente which is different than your, nine, or your regular nine millimeter that you're used to these, you know, that we shoot these days. But for a, for a gun that's over a hundred years old, this thing is in great shape. This barrel's in awesome shape actually. So, um, you know, it's just really kind of just preserving the history of this gun. Um, it's got some, some pitting and stuff like that on the gun, but really that's what this gun is for. It's a collector's gun, not a shooter. So there's the end of Snake in action. It's a it's a really good product. I, I like this product. You're going to see it in more of my videos coming up because I do have some older guns that we're going to be looking at and definitely it's going to be worth taking a look down those barrels. So as a product, this thing is great at, you know, at a price point of $55. It's hard to beat for a DIY gunsmith or even around the house. This thing is waterproof, so you can go down a drain. If you have a clogged drain, you can get into that trap and see what's going on. So it's definitely worth a purchase of $55. As a product, I'd give it a 3.5 out of five. 
Um, it does have some weaknesses with that mirror. Um, as a borescope, that mirror is pretty critical. So that way we can see a little closer inside the lands and grooves. But as I said before, $55, I would buy this thing all day long. Um, this thing's great. I'm not a professional gunsmith. If you're a professional gunsmith, you're probably going to do something a little more high end. So that way you can get that, um, that 90 degree view into the lands and grooves. Thanks for watching. Hope you're staying safe out there and look forward to seeing you again soon.